Welcome to our previous next question. Now let's continue our lectures on IR spectroscopy. Today we are going to deal with uh, like a calculation of stretching frequency as well as factors which are influences on the vibrational stretching frequency. Okay. Now let's move on to the topic. So first of all, how do you calculate the stretching stretching frequency of atoms? Stretching frequency of an atoms. So generally, it is the molecule. Let's imagine. So here it is the molecule A and B are the atoms. So it it is imagined by the like two balls which are connected through a spring. Like let's uh, let's assume so here it is the two balls are there. So these two balls are connected through a spring that is uh, that seems to be a molecule. Okay. So those type of uh, springed balls, uh, Hooke's law is applicable. Which law? Hooke's law. So Hooke's law it it gives the information new the frequency like a frequency is directly proportional to the square root of its bond strength that is the bond strength by its mass its reduced mass its reduced mass so this is the hooke's law definition new is directly proportional to the square root of bond strength by its reduced mass reduced mass simply so here it is written as a bond strength is nothing but force constant reduced mass is represented as new okay so this is the equation so whenever it is it is converted into is equal to the 2 pi is the constant value so square root of k by mu k by mu we know that uh, the new and the new bar definition that is a frequency and wave number definition so new bar is equal to new into c okay so sorry new is equal to new bar into c okay let us substitute these values over there so new bar c is equal to 1 by 2 p into 2 pi into root k by mu so root k upon mu so here c whenever the c is uh, going to the right side it becomes a denominator so new bar is equal to 1 by 2 pi c square root of k upon mu so this is the hooks law for vibrated molecule hooks law for vibrated molecule so based on this formula we can calculate the so like vibrational frequency of any atom or any vibrated bonds okay now let's move on to the factors which are influences on the higher stretching frequency i think it is clear note this uh, formula which are help helpful for predicting the stretching frequencies Okay, now let's move on to the factors. So generally, uh, the, some of the stretching frequencies are varied. Okay, generally for carbonyl stretching frequency is 17-15. This is common for a normal ketone functionality. Okay, so whenever it is attached to the like a conjugated molecule, it is in the pot of conjugated, it lessens the stretching frequency. What will happen? We don't know. Okay, now some of the times, so the ketone which is part of a ester functionality, so it enhances its stretch, stretching frequency. Okay, sometimes it may be down or sometimes it may be up. We don't know the reasons why these kind of up and downs are takes place in the uh, like uh, stretching frequency of a carbonyl functionality in different different functional groups. Okay, so those differentiation was explained by the these factors. So, uh, sim uh, very simple factors that is the force constant, a reduced mass, inductive effect, hypoconjugation, resonance or conjugation or mesomeric effect, strain in molecule, okay, ring strain as well as the field effect. Finally, that is the hydrogen bonding, okay. Now, let us discuss those factors one by one very clearly, okay. Now, the first factor that is the force constant, force constant, okay, which is shown in the symbol of K, okay, from the Hooke's law. We know that nu bar is equal to 1 by 2 pi c into square root of k upon mu. Square root of k upon mu. This is the Hooke's law. This is the Hooke's law. Okay. From the Hooke's law, nu bar is directly proportional to the k. Okay. So nu bar is the directly proportional to the square root of k. That means it is a directly proportionality. It is directly proportionality. So nu bar is directly proportional to the k. So k is nothing but k is directly proportional to the bond strength that is the force constant is directly proportional to the bond strength okay we know that in inorganic theories that is the molecular orbital theory so that molecular orbital theory will give us the information so if bond strength increases bond order increases originally they are given in the information bond order increases bond strength increases okay so these two are inversely proportional to the bond length whenever the bond length is more and more these two are uh, suppressed that means it is decreased okay so the bond order is inversely proportional to the bond length so note this inversely proportional to the bond length so bond order is directly proportional to the bond strength so from this relation so k is directly proportional to the bond order 
Is it right or wrong? Okay, so K is directly proportional to the bond strength. Bond strength is directly proportional to the B, uh, the like bond order. Then automatically, so first constant is directly proportional to the bond order. To the, the bond order. Okay, so again, so bond order is inversely proportional to the bond length. So K is inversely proportional to the bond length. These are the very simple relations. Okay, so if K is directly proportional to the bond order, then automatically, so K is directly proportional to the frequency, then automatically frequency is directly proportional to the bond order. Frequency is directly proportional to the bond order. So frequency is inversely proportional to the bond length. So that means, if bond order increases, vibrational frequency increases. If bond length increases, vibrational frequency, that is a stretching frequency decreases. Okay, let us take this, some of the very simple examples. For example, C C C double bond C C triple bond C. Okay, now here this is the bond order. Only one bond, two bonds, three bonds. So bond order increases from left to right, but the stretching frequencies appears like this: thousand to eleven fifty. So fifteen fifty to sixteen fifty. Approximate values are the exact two thousand one hundred to two thousand two fifty, like a two thousand two hundred. These are the approximate values. Okay. So now, if the bond order increases, automatically stretching frequencies also increases. Okay. So these uh, ex uh, these example will clearly explains the statement regarding to the new bar that is uh, frequency is directly proportional to the bond order. Frequency is directly proportional to the bond order. Okay. Now let's move on to the second application. I think it is clear. Okay, note these are uh, all the like uh, representations. So finally, what we summarize that so force constant like bond strength is directly proportional to the force constant, which is directly proportional to the bond order, which is inversely proportional to the bond length. All are like this. So this is the final conclusion. New bar. Okay, frequency directly proportional to the bond order, frequency directly proportional to the force constant, frequency directly proportional to the bond strength, but frequency inversely proportional to the bond length. A single form. Okay, I think it is very easier. Now let's move on to the second one. So that is the like reduced mass. Okay. Okay. From the Hooke's law equation, nu bar is equal to one by two pi c into square root of k by mu. Okay, nu bar is inversely proportional to the mu. So mu we know that reduced mass that is equal to the m1 m2 by m1 plus m2. So this is the like a reduced mass equation m1 m2 are the are like atom A and atom B. So whenever this is the like a ball this is the ball okay this is atom A atom B. So these two are connected through a spring that is why because so this bond is vibrated it, it uh, seems to be a spring okay so now these the mass of a and b is nothing but m1 and m2 m1 and m2 so here it is the like a reduced mass formula nu bar is inversely proportional to the 1 by mu nu bar is inversely proportional to the 1 by mu so that indicates here ccl cbr cl or like a c hydrogen c deuterium c tritium it is very best example okay now here the mass of hydrogen is one mass of deuterium is two mass of tritium is three okay so from all these three so which one mass is uh, higher so tritium mass is higher so higher the mass lesser the stretching frequency okay lesser the mass higher the stretching frequency from the equation we will easily find the this relation so higher the mass lesser the stretching frequency uh, like a uh, lesser the mass higher the stretching frequency higher the stretching frequency from that uh, so here it is the like less mass new bar is more so new bar is less okay from that we can write the those values uh, new ch new cd new ct okay this is the new bar new bar new bar okay very simple equation regarding to the second factor okay now let's move on to the third factor Okay, now let's move on to the third one that is the inductive effect. So we know that inductive effect are two types. Okay, so so plus i effect and the minus i effect that is uh, donating groups with drawing groups. Okay, now let's take the one of the carbonyl example. So in presence of donating group as well as with drawing group. So here it is the with drawing group, here it is the donating group. Okay, let's take the example. So withdrawing, withdrawing capacity, that is withdrawing group means it uh, pulls the electron cloud towards itself. It pulls the electron cloud towards itself. Then the electron cloud towards the withdrawing atom. So then the carbon oxygen bond order will be decreased. So now here it is the bond order. 
now it is shortened it is shortened due to the like withdrawing effect due to the withdrawing effect now in case of uh, donating groups it donates the like its electronic cloud towards the carbon atom so then automatically the bond order that, that means it is longer the bond order will be longer so this is the presence of donating group, presence of donating group however so bond length is bond length is less so bond length is less so then automatically force constant is more so force constant is more so that is k is more if k is more automatically new bar is more new bar is more so that indicates so withdrawing group increases the stretching frequency withdrawing group increases the withdrawing group increases new bar so withdrawing group increases new bar like similarly here bond length is more so here the like bond uh, presence of donating group bond length between the carbonyl like carbon and oxygen it is more so if more bond length more bond length according to the previous equation so the more bond length less k value less is force constant so if it is less force constant then automatically its new bar is also less new bar is also less so donating group donating group decreases stretching frequency decreases stretching frequency okay now here in presence of withdrawing group bond length is less that means a shorter the bond length shorter the bond length more force constant more force more more force constant then automatically it's a, a new bar is more Okay, now in, in instead of in in case of uh, like donating groups, uh, here the presence of donating group bond length is more. If bond length is more, force constant is less. So if force constant is less automatically. Its stretching frequency is also less. So this is the third factor regarding to the like uh, donating and withdrawing group. Okay, withdrawing group increases, donating group huh, decreases. Let's take the one of the example. So here it is the like uh, aldehyde, benzaldehyde. So in presence of um, in presence of O methyl group. So this is the like a simple benzaldehyde. So in presence of withdrawing, in presence of a withdrawing group, among these two, which is more? So donating groups are lesser the stretching frequency. Withdrawing groups more the stretching frequency. So they are given in these three kinds. So automatically withdrawing group, a normal one, donating groups. That is the uh, symbol. Okay. So these are the third examples. Now let's move on to the fourth example. Okay, now the fourth one is hyperconjugation. So hyperconjugation. Okay, we know that the hyperconjugation means alpha hydrogen effect. Okay, so the presence of hyperconjugation, so like a C double bond C, carbonyl compound, uh, sorry, not the carbonyl compound, alkene bond length is more. CH, here it is the H plus, here it is the H minus. Okay, now let's imagine these are double bond character. So here it is the double bond character is there. Now here it becomes a partial double bond character. So that means a, a double bond to single bond character. That means approximately 1.5 is there. Okay, the bond bond order is 1.5. So the bond order automatically decreases. If bond order decreases, bond length increases. Okay, it was proved like this. So here it is the more bond length, more bond length if more bond length is present then automatically its force constant reduces it reduces its force constant automatically its frequency is also less its frequency is also less okay so that means the presence of uh, presence of hyperconjugation decreases the new bar that means the stretching frequency let us take the example so here it is the hydrogen so here it is the methyl so here it is the like two methyl groups so aldehyde and ketone which is the lesser stretching frequency so the, due to the presence of hydrogen burning sorry not the hydrogen burning due to the presence of hyperconjugation it lessers the stretching frequency than aldehyde so aldehyde is more value than compared to the ketone okay so this is the best example now let's move on to the fifth one very very useful and important one so that is the conjugation or resonance conjugation or resonance or mesomeric effect okay so this is the simple alkene okay now here it is the uh, like a conjugated alkene this is the uh, conjugated alkene whenever the conjugated alkene is present uh, so whenever the molecular excitation uh, ir radiation irradiate to the molecule so then automatically vibrates like this so it's shown the its corresponding color sorry it's shown the its corresponding like a conjugated structure 
plus and minus plus and minus so that means here the double bond character decreases so here also if double bond character decreases bond length more bond length more so then its force constant decreases if its force constant decreases automatically its frequency also decreases so the final conclusion so the presence of conjugation presence of conjugation final thing stretching frequency decreases okay conjugation decreases its stretching frequency conjugation decreases its stretching frequency let's imagine so here it is the like a diene so here it is the triene so among these two molecule so which one has the more stretching frequency here only one conjugation is there here the more conjugation so the more conjugation more conjugation less stretching frequency less stretching frequency less conjugation more stretching frequency more stretching frequency so this is the like a simple uh, conclusion regarding to the carbonyl compound let us take the simple examples okay now let's take the some simple examples so here it is the ketone so the ketone value is 1750 okay so here it is the carbonyl compound carbonyl compound that is also ketone but it is in the part of a conjugation okay now here it is in the part of another conjugation okay so now among these two which one is more stretching frequency here the presence of conjugation presence of conjugation it lessens the stretching frequency so that's why a, a b c so a is greater than that of the b in the presence of stretching frequency in the concept of a stretching frequency so b has only one stretching like only one conjugated molecules that means let's say uh, imagine so here one percent conjugation is there so here two double bonds are there it means uh, it uh, twice of the its conjugation two percent conjugation is present so the more conjugation lessens the stretching frequency automatically c is less than that of the b so this is the stretching frequency order stretching frequency order some of the exceptions are there now in case of uh, like a uh, cyclic uh, esters in case of lactones so here it is the compound so here it is the conjugation okay so here the conjugation is present here also conjugation is present okay so in this case of uh, like a normal compound normal ester okay so there is no uh, there is a simple compound a simple like a carbonyl compound okay so there is no conjugation 1715 is present so here the carbonyl compound which is in the part of two bonds conjugation so here one percent conjugation is that here also like a one percent that means here hundred percent conjugation over there hundred percent conjugation over here so that means a uh, 200 percent conjugation is present that means it is more conjugation so now in case of like uh, this oxygen so this oxygen atom a single oxygen atom it can participate in the like two kinds of uh, two kinds of conjugation two kinds of conjugation that means a single atom that means 100% so 100% it can distribute the two types of conjugation that indicates here 50% conjugation 50% conjugation okay so these two molecules are having the conjugation so that's why it is the uh, it uh, these two molecules having the conjugation among these two so which is the more so lesser conjugation more value so this is the let's imagine here a here b okay so b is more stretching frequency than a so this is the one of the previous year question based on this concept so many of the previous year questions are came in csar as well as gate examination okay now let's move on to the uh, another examples that is the strain in molecule okay now this sixth one strain strain in the molecule that is also like a, a six hundred trans strain. Okay, let's take the one of the conjugated example. So this is the carbonyl compound. So which, uh, it is a, a cis conjugated compound. So here it is the like a trans conjugated compound. Okay. So among these two, these kind of molecules are given in the examples. Among these two, which one has more stretching frequency? That is the question. Which one has a more stretching frequency? So let's exam. Uh, let's. Uh, uh, conclude the like uh, this concept this type of uh, strain molecule concept here it is the conjugation here also conjugation so due to the steric strain it's uh, having the less conjugation it's having less conjugation are you clear so due to this why why because it's less conjugation due to the steric strain it is the lesser conju conjugation so now here there is no strain no steric strain so if there is no strain then automatically it is a uh, more conjugation 
more conjugation. So if it is more conjugation, so less of the switching frequency. So it is the A, it is the B. Let's label it as A and B. So the more conjugation, less of switching frequency, less conjugation, more the switching frequency. Nu bar A is greater than that of the nu bar B. So this is the compound. Okay. So that's why. So the finally, what we conclude, cis compounds has the more uh, like more stretching frequency when compared to the trans. Why? Because trans does not having the much more conjug uh, sorry, uh, much more like a steric strain. So that's why it has the more conjugation, more conjugation, lesser the stretching frequency. That is like the one of the example. So here it is the comp ketone compound phenyl. So here it is the compound phenyl. Okay. So now here it is the 1699 centimeter inverse. So here it is 1675 approximately. So 1675, 1650, those kind of uh, like uh, those kind of area, uh, like those range stretching frequencies observed in the IR spectrum. So this is the sixth factor. Now let's move on to the seventh factor that is very, very important factor. So ring strain. Ring strain. So ring strain that means if the like a ring like a ring size increases then automatically strain decreases if the strain decreases automatically stretching frequency decreases let's take the one of the example so this is the like a propanone cyclopropanone butanone pantanone hexanone okay so now here this is the more strain so the more strain means more percentage of S character. So that means 40. So original S character is 33.3 percent. Okay. So here 45 percent, 42 percent, 36 percent. Okay. So the percentage of S character is more and more in these small rings. The percentage of S character is more and more in case of the small rings. Okay. Now, so the three member ring has the more percentage of S character. So the more percentage of S character means more electronegative. So here it is the more percentage of S character, more the stretching frequency, more that point. So due to the strain, so it's only like 1820 centimeter inverse. So it is the 1775 centimeter inverse, 1751 centimeter inverse. We know that 1715 centimeter inverse. That means the more strain, the like more strain having the more percentage of S character. If it is more percentage of S character, automatically its stretching frequency is also uh, uh, touches the top of this uh, its carbonyl range, top of the its carbonyl range. So that indicates more strain like a more stretching frequency it is not applicable for the all the cases it is applicable for the like a ring strained molecules only okay now then automatically percentage of s character is more more the stretching frequency more the stretching frequency this is the best example okay now in case of like a double bonded compounds in three membered four membered or five member so they are asking the question among these for which one has the more stretching frequency with respect to the double bonds so here it is the more and more more okay this is the new a bar is greater than that of the new b so which is greater than that of the new c which is greater than that of the new d this is the stretching frequency range a b c d okay so this is the application uh, sorry factor number seven now let's move on to the field effect the factor number eight Very, very useful concept, guys. Don't miss it. So, the eighth effect is field effect. So, this is very useful one. Field effect. Okay. Now, in case of carb, uh, like a C double bond O, C double bond N, C double bond C. So, uh, our discussions we are discussed about uh, the C double bond C is 1550 to 1650 or 1500 to 1650. Here it is the 1600 to 1675. The range, this is not exact values. Now, here 1700, 1680 to 1820. So this is the range of stretching frequency. Okay. In generally, so we are uh, we are confused with. Uh, so here the mass of the atom increases. If mass increases, then automatically stretching frequency decreases according to the our second rule. According to the our second factor, if mass increases, then stretching frequency decreases. So that rule is not applicable over here. Okay. So that is the question mark. Okay. So in case of second rule, so if mass increases, then automatically its stretching frequency decreases. But that's why, uh, sorry, but that rule is not applicable over here. So that's why many of the uh, students, they are suffered with these kind of exceptions in IR spectroscopy. Okay, now I'll explain in a very easy manner. Okay, so here, C double bond C, C double bond N, C double bond O. So here, the uh, more, uh, polarity from top to, sorry, from bottom to top, uh, polarity increases. So here, the polarity increases from bottom to top, polarity 
increases why because the electronegativity difference between the atoms increases electronegativity difference between the atoms increases if polarity increases then automatically its dipole moment increases that is the main factor so the dipole moment increases automatically its stretching frequency increases so here it is the more dipole moment more dipole moment so uh, more dipole moment so that's why it shown the more stretching frequency so equal number less dipole moment it shown the less stretching frequency less stretching frequency that is the key factor regarding to the this kind of molecule so that, that is the field effect now in case of uh, like strained molecule like alpha and beta so this is the carbon and cr cl so this is the like a uh, carbonyl with uh, equatorial position here it is the axial here it is the equatorial position the dipole moment towards the carbonyl oxygen towards the oxygen atom so these both are like almost are lesser the dipole moment lesser dipole moment so here it is the due to the more repulsion more dipole moment the more dipole moment it's on the highest stretching frequency it's on the lesser stretching frequency of the carbonyl compound the 1725 approximate range okay so this is the 17 to 25 stretching frequency range 1725 stretching frequency range now so these are the very best examples regarding to the field effect now let's move on to the hydrogen bonding let's move on to the hydrogen bonding so very very important one okay so now Okay, now the final one is hydrogen bonding. We know that. So hydrogen bonding is mainly observed in case of ketones and the enols. Ketones and enols. It undergoes the like a ketoenol tautomerism. So here it is the double bond OH. So here it is the ketone. So this undergoes this type of hydrogen bonding. This undergoes this type of hydrogen bonding. So the ketones and the enols, majorly ketones and the enols as well as the dimers of a, like a carboxylic acid is shown the more hydrogen bonding. So generally OH stretching frequency is 3600 centimeter inverse. OH stretching frequency is 3600 centimeter inverse. Whenever the OH in the port of like a, the OH in the port of a, like a hydrogen bonding the OH in the port of hydrogen bonding so the oxygen hydrogen that is oxygen hydrogen bond length is more why because so here it is the hydrogen bonding so that means a partial single bond a single a single bond character is present in case of uh, like OHO so this is the like hydrogen bonding this is the like hydrogen bonding that means here bond length is more so bond length is more so if bond length is more like a force constant decreases then automatically and then automatically its stretching frequency is also decreases its stretching frequency is also decreases okay now i'll repeat it my sentence now the presence of hydrogen bonding so the bond distance between the oh is more the bond distance is more that indicates bond length is more so if bond length is more then its uh, force constant is less if force constant is less then automatically stretching frequency is also less okay so this is the final conclusion so the final conclusion is so hydrogen bonding lessens the stretching frequency lesser the hydrogen bond higher the stretching frequency higher the hydrogen bonding lesser the stretching frequency okay so this is very good sentence lesser the hydrogen bond higher the stretching frequency higher the hydrogen bond lesser the stretching frequency lesser the stretching frequency now so what are the conclusions regarding to the so these kind of all the factors okay so uh, first one is the force constant mass then inductive effect hypoconjugation conjugation so then the sixth one strained molecule ring strain like a field effects Finally, this is the hydrogen bonding. Uh, some of the examples regarding to the hydrogen bonding. This is the CH3 C double bond O OH. C double bond O OH. This is the like a dimer of acetic acid. Dimer of acetic acid. So in case of um, like um, ortho OH, ortho OH carboxylic acid functional group. So here also it has the like hydrogen bonding. So here also as the hydrogen bonding. So now in case of like a very simple acetoacetone compound, so it kind these kind of molecules is also shown the hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding lessens the stretching frequency. Hydrogen bonding lessens the stretching frequency. Again, like at lower temperature, so the almost all uh, free OH stretching frequency is disappear. So whenever the free OH stretching frequency is disappear, this is that these are the like main key factors regarding to the higher spectroscopy. I think I hope it is very 
uh, easily like uh, easily remembering ticks for the ir spectroscopy i hope you guys it is very clear for the all the aspects of uh, factors which are influences on the ir vibrational stretching frequency okay i'll be back with uh, some of the examples uh, regarding to the these factors until take care thank you so much for watching